Hello and welcome to Curious Austrian Tours. The feudal system of leasehold persists. What is it that makes us still cling on to this concept so much? Land law in Britain owes much to the feudal system that developed following the Norman conquest. The ability to grant inferior interests in land and to take income from these, like rents, remains an important feature of the law. By the 16th century, the law of leases in England and Wales had evolved into a confusing approach. The most comprehensive attempt to tackle this in the modern era was the Law of Property Act 1925, which limited the legal estate to either freehold or leasehold. While these remnants of the feudal system appear unfair, it has proved almost impossible to separate our land law from its history. Rental landlords were faced with new laws holding down rents and restricting their rights to evict tenants. Many of them, faced with dwindling profits, started to sell longer leases, typically 99 or 125 years, to bring in more money, and consequently created a new type of tenant, the owner-occupier. Leases are created by a deed, and the deed is translated into the lease in the form of covenants, promises. While there is no fundamental distinction in law between a lease and a tenancy, the long leaseholder enjoys the right of occupation over many years, freedom of interference from the landlord and lower rent. Indeed, ground rent used often to be at peppercorn levels as low as one pound. This was the beginning of the modern leasehold system that we know today. In Scotland, the feudal structure existed but with other features, including a few duty to be paid by landowners to the feudal superior, similar to the ground rent payable by leaseholders in England and Wales. Often set long ago, they can be insignificant sums today after decades of inflation, but are still legally enforceable. The feudal structure of landholding was predominant in Scotland until steps were taken to remove it. No feudity could be created after 1974. No residential lease for more than 20 years could be created and the feudal structure was finally abolished in Scotland in 2004. But the laws since have converted long leases over 175 years into straightforward ownership. There has been no such sweeping reform in England and Wales, however, feudal remnants such as manorial rights still remain, largely unnoticed by industrial and urban development. The popularity of the modern leasehold estate owes much to Victorian property developers. During the late 19th and early 20th centuries, it was common for a builder to develop land under an agreement with the landowner who would sell the land to the builder on a long lease, typically 99 years. There was little in the way of planning controls and regulations at that time, and landowners were free to do almost anything they liked with their property. Sellers who wished to keep some control over the land could only rely on private legal covenants drawn up in the sale agreement, which might for example prevent a landowner from using the land for business or from extending property by an extra story. A series of legal decisions in English courts established that freehold covenants could only stipulate what was not allowed, while leasehold covenants allowed the freeholder to enforce positive covenants, for example requiring the property to be maintained. This became an obvious advantage of leasehold. The grandeur of London's Georgian squares owes much to the burden of upkeep placed on leaseholders. For example, and as English towns grew, leasehold was commonly used. But the opposite happened in Scots law, where a new type of property rights known as real burdens provided the means to impose positive and negative obligations on land and ownership. As this removed the major benefit of leasehold, it never had the same appeal or use in Scotland. Leaseholders gained the right to remain in their homes at a regulated rent under the Landlord and Tenant Act 1954 and to renew their lease or buy the freehold under the Leasehold Reform Act 1967. But the right to buy or extend the leasehold is not free and leaseholders may find themselves facing significant charges, fees and ground rents. Demands for the reform have been growing with a battle fought on two fronts. The first of these is new build developments with exploitative leasehold terms. The second is legal relief from onerous terms for existing leaseholders. It is still conceivable for a leaseholder to be evicted, owning nothing as the property reverts back to the freeholder at the end of the lease. Nowadays, though, the leaseholder would have to be very ill-informed to be oblivious of the legislation introduced between 1967 and 2000 to create greater fairness, particularly for leaseholders. 
Crucial amongst these is the right to extend their leases for an additional 19 years. Given that the majority of larger blocks or flats are nearly certainly going to be owned on a lease, then understanding your lease is imperative, yet it's not always easy to make sense of it. Covenants in leases define rights and responsibilities. They say what the leaseholder must and must not do. They range from paying service charges, ground rent, insurance and to building specific rules. In theory, they are the framework for everyone getting along well and living in a well-maintained building. Common hold is an interesting approach and was introduced in England in 2002. It was the first new type of legal estate to be introduced in English law since 1925 and was widely hailed as a new and fair way to own a flat. It would give flat owners real ownership of their properties rather than just a long lease. They would own the indefinite freehold tenure of part of a multi-occupancy building, the flat, with shared ownership of and responsibility for common areas and services. It sounds ideal, yet only a handful of common holds have been created since the Act came into force, while hundreds of thousands of old-style long leases have been created. Many would argue that the most effective way to address the injustices of leasehold is to abolish it altogether, as in Scotland. In practice, the heavy reliance on leasehold estates in England and Wales and the vested interests that this has created over centuries makes this very difficult. Now let's recap and explain the main differences between freehold and leasehold. What is freehold? So if you own a freehold, it means that you own the building and the land it stands on outright, in perpetuity. It is your name in the land registry as freeholder, owning the title absolute. Freehold is pretty much always the preferred option, you can't really go wrong with it. If you own the freehold, you won't pay annual ground rent. You yourself are responsible for maintaining the fabric of the building roof and outside walls. You don't have to face the difficulty of a freeholder either failing to maintain the building or charging huge amounts for its maintenance. A whole house is typically freehold. There is no purpose for a standalone house to be leasehold, granting there is an increasing trend for leasehold houses, particularly with new built homes at the moment, so do check the tenure of the property before you buy. What is leasehold? Leasehold means that you only have a lease from the freeholder, occasionally called the landlord, to use the home for an agreed number of years. The leases are usually long term, oftentimes around 90 years or 120 years and as high as 999 years, but can also be short term, such as low as 40 years, which usually defers future prospective buyers, as a lease of at least 80 to 90 years is the minimum most people would very likely demand in this situation. Generally, a leaseholder has a contract with the freeholder, which sets down the legal rights and responsibilities of either side. The freeholder will usually be responsible for maintaining the common parts of the building, such as the entrance hall, a staircase, as well as the exterior walls and roof. Nevertheless, other leaseholders in the property might have claimed their right to manage, in which case it is their responsibility. Leaseholders will have to obtain permission for any major works intended to be done to the property. And as a leaseholder, you will pay a share of the building's insurance, maintenance fees, as well as annual service charges. The annual ground rent is typically paid to the freeholder. And there may be other rather undesirable leasehold restrictions, such as not allowed to own pets or to sublet. If the leaseholders don't fulfill the terms of the lease, for example by not paying the fees, then the lease can become forfeit. If the lease were to end, ownership of the property reverts to the landlord but it's rare for this to happen under law reforms, leaseholders have an automatic right to renew, extend the lease. Most flats are leaseholds and are usually controlled and managed day to day by managing agents on behalf of the landlord. Houses can also be leasehold and they usually are if they're bought through a shared ownership scheme. In more recent times, builders as well as developers began to realize the additional value from a development by selling flats and houses as leaseholds, charging ongoing ground rents, then selling the leases onto investors. The difficulty was that the system started to be abused. They got greedy and started the leaseholders off with expensive ground rent charges that were in some cases set to double every decade, causing payments to rise exponentially over time. Unwary people were often lulled into buying properties which became unsellable due to their long-term lease liabilities. 
Despite even these most recent reforms, critics say the system is still inherently unfair to homeowners who lease properties, and the cladding scandal in London has simply assisted to highlight the predicament even more, although in a very tragic way. Countless flat leaseholders are confronted with exorbitant charges for ongoing building safety, life-changing amounts of debt needed to rectify and save cladding, and they cannot sell. The government is said to want to phase out the leasehold system altogether. It wants to come up with a formula for establishing the value of freeholds and to take the responsibility of leaseholders to pay the legal fees of the freeholder. These plans are still being discussed. These changes, if they match the proposals, will have the potential to bring about a fundamental shift in the way property is owned and managed in Britain, and particularly in the capital, where the majority of leaseholds reside, leading to a major rebalancing of wealth. Do let me know what you think in the comments below. Alright, that's it for today. I appreciate you watching this video. Please don't hesitate to like this video, subscribe to my channel and hit the alarm bell for your convenience. In the meantime, cheerio!